So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Oris Big Crown Pointer Day. It's a watch I've been interested in for a while. I wanted to own one for a while. Uh, I was originally interested in the blue slate gray dial, but I ended up going with the red one. So let's get into it and hope you enjoy. So let's take some dimensions of the watch. We have a diameter of pretty much 40. Lug to lug comes in at about 48. We have a height of about 12. And we have a lug width of 20. Now we do have a see-through case back and this has the Oris 754 movement, which is just pretty much the Salita SW200-1 because it has a date. Obviously it's slightly modified so it can do this whole pointer date configuration. We have a screw down crown which has 50 meters of stated water resistance and there are sapphire on the front and back crystal. Now getting into the dial first and foremost, we can see we have this beautiful uh, dark red dial. Some may say burgundy, some may say maroon, somewhere in that color family. Now most of the times I would say the color does come across as this very dark red color. But when you get into direct sunlight, which is very, very hard to simulate here, um, I'll throw in some pictures somewhere on some side. Uh, you get this very nice, almost cherry red, uh, a very nice lighter red, almost kind of matching the seconds hand there more, or sorry, the date hand there more. So it is a little cool how dynamic the dial can be, but it also is very nice and almost understated in the red tone that it is in that currently. As you can see, we have the simple Arabic numerals uh, 1 through 12. On the outside, we have the 1 through 31 for the date, uh, railroad inner track somewhat. And nice set of cathedral hands, which you really don't see on many watch models nowadays. A very pencil thin seconds hand with a counterbalance, a pointer date with this crescent shaped red pointer. And I like the play between the darker red and the lighter red on the pointer. It makes it pop and it looks pretty cool, I think. Overall, the dial is very nicely done. We have this nice deep coloration to it. I think the hands match the nice kind of red with this whitish creamish type of printing and uh, loom signature. Uh, looks pretty cool. So going on to this macro level, we see that the loom plots are really well done. They are filled in very nicely, not really any imperfection to the numerals there. We see the shade of red is slightly lighter than what it was showing earlier. And as I said, the dial does slightly change, but it's nothing too major. Excuse the little dust on the crystal. The cutout for the hands are actually very nicely done. I don't actually see any imperfections along the length of the hands, the edges, the tip, the loom plots within the hands. I think it's all very nicely done, nicely machined. No real imperfections, which is very refreshing to see on a watch in this price point, which, you know, a retail 1600, but you can, know, you can obviously work on your AD for a price or find them on the used market for around a thousand dollars. Railroad track very nicely printed defined all the numerals on the outside very well printed So yeah, really nice dial no real imperfections from what I can see and overall just Really nice and clean. So moving on to the case of the watch What really draws at least my intention from the outset is this very cool? Kind of I guess knurled bezel you would call it I don't know what the technical term is or if there is really a term that Oris used uh, coinage might be a better term to describe it but it is very defined, very nicely finished. It adds a nice visual texture to the watch. Um, it just gives it something that stands out from the rest. I think the cathedral hands, the bezel itself, how obviously large the crown is, it's all very interesting points that are unique to this watch that come together to make something that is really unique on the wrist and off the wrist, frankly. You see we have these nicely done vertically brushed lugs, very high polished on the sides with a high polish um, crown as well, badged Oris. We can see the case itself has a very streamlined look to it. It is very curved to the wrist of the wearer. The lugs come to e pretty much either meet or almost drop below the case back. So that means it does wear very nicely, very close to the wrist. 
and a lot of the height comes from the dome of this sapphire crystal so it does wear very slimly for its size. Uh, one thing I really like about the case design is the fact that the bezel actually pretty much sits into the case almost as if it's just like an additional piece that's just dropped on. Very cool, love the cutaway here, uh, very nice. Again, high polish on the other side, more visible for that cutout right there. We have the classic orish red rotor showing the pretty much undecorated Salita movement. And just, you know, the general information on the back. But yeah, nothing too fancy about the case. It is nicely done and I think really complements the watch in itself. Uh, I do prefer a watch that has brushed lug tops. Uh, I don't know why, but for me, I think it just looks more proper most of the time. But it is nice when you have a high polish on the sides, add some visual interest to the watch. So moving on to how this watch wears. Earlier, I was wearing my Zodiac Seawolf. So here we have the Oris on my 6.5 inch wrist. Uh, it doesn't conform perfectly just because the thickness of the strap that it comes on. So it doesn't look like it really fits too well within the balance of my wrist and it is granted a larger watch in general but i don't think it is too large and still is something that the smaller wristed folk can pull off but albeit all probably on a different less bulky strap but overall the fairly short lug to lug distance of about 48 millimeters can sit within most wrists you know I would recommend just people measuring the top length of their wrist and finding out what size it can really endure if you know you're into the whole proportionality look if you don't care if it hangs off the side of your wrist then why should anyone else care as you can see those lugs really do curve down very nicely to meet the wrist making it wear very very nicely I would say overall that even though this is a 40 millimeter watch the bezel being kind of sloped downwards leaves a lot of space for uh, the dial and it being a very dial heavy watch I think it does wear slightly larger than most 40 millimeter watches do um, again if I bring in my Zodiac Seawolf so which granted this is a dive watch and obviously the dial diameter is going to be smaller because of it having that bezel on it this is a 40 millimeter in diameter watch, so is this, but you can just tell that the openings or the dial diameters are much different. This one will almost appear smaller on the wrist than the Oris does. So based on the dimensions I'm seeing for this watch, I would say that 36 is probably a pretty good fit for those of us with smaller wrists. Uh, but sadly, the 36 only comes in, I believe, a bronze version, a black dial, and a kind of chalkboard green dial. So at least you have the black dial variety in the 36, but if you want these cool colors like the red, the blue, uh, you're gonna have to spring for the 40 and hope you like the way it fits. So really quickly, here is that Oris on the white silicone strap that I previously had my Zodiac on. I think you can tell when it's on this strap, it sits better within my wrist than the other strap does, or at least visually to me, in person it looks that way. Um, it also allows it to wear closer to the wrist because this strap is nowhere as near as thick as the other one was. And yeah, just a nice way to dress down the watch a little bit. So heading into the typical loom comparison, we have the Oris here on the right, and then we have the Timex Snoopy here on the left. As you can see, I would say the color temperature between the two is pretty similar, even though the Timex looks like it's overtaking it. Obviously, the coloration on the hands is much darker on the Oris than any of the printed uh, numerals are. But overall, I think Oris did a pretty decent job on the loom. As you can see, the hour, uh, not the hours, but the numerals die down a lot faster than the rest of the watch does. But well into the day, you'll definitely see that the hour hand and the pips do keep their light pretty well so you'll still be able to make out the time through those two means pros and cons of this watch basically i would say the biggest pro is just the dial in itself the even if you don't go for this variation like the slate gray blue one the even the black or the chalkboard green 
all these dials are just pretty interesting colors and they're just kind of different than the norm even though it's a blue dial it's not a regular blue dial this one in particular is a red dial i mean how many red dial watches do you see so i think that's just a really cool feature of the watch it's something nice to have and it's kind of like that watch you get already after having already had a couple other pieces in your collection so you know start to add some color start to add some fun pieces so i think that's really nice about the watch overall i also just really like the pointer date function it's different it is visually pleasing to me in general i like the idea that the date is almost more moving than in just a regular date wheel and overall the watch is just it has a nice case shape i guess it's very curvaceous so it sits well on the wrist nicely brushed nicely polished i love the coin edged bezel uh so yeah the case is really nice Moving on to cons and kind of like weird because it was also kind of a pro, but the case again, not in terms of the finishing or the look or the general wearability of it, but just in the sense that I feel like for the size and the dimensions, it shouldn't look as big slash fit as blocky on the wrist as it does. Uh, that's why, you know, for me personally, if I would have kept this watch, I probably would go for a 36 millimeter. Uh, one of the 36 millimeter variants but it is a very nice watch it's very comfortable but i think it is suited more towards larger wrists probably closer to like a seven inch wrist and up would feel pretty at home with this watch uh, i mean obviously i have a six and a half inch wrist and it fits fine but just not perfectly i would say other than that the only other con i have really is that the pointer date hand and the second hand are just like a little too thin for my liking they just seem almost too fragile and unsubstantial compared to how just like thick and apparent the cathedral handset is so i feel like that's a you know kind of like a juxtaposition that doesn't really work perfectly on the dial i would have liked to see the hands a little thicker a little bit more substantial but overall it's a great watch it is good at the price usually i mean i wouldn't pay more than around a thousand dollars for one uh even more so it's well suited at the 900 hundred dollar used range depending on you know the color variation the watch is really nice it's a definite cool field slash everyday watch it's not too dressy it tends to be more casual but it's great for that environment it again like i was saying earlier it's a nice way to add some fun color into your collection it's also just well made it's a good watch i mean the movement's not decorated to any great standard or anything but it's a great watch if you're interested in the design if you're kind of hankering for a watch that has numerals on it because for me i feel like a lot of watches at the price point don't for some reason like you can go for like this is in 556 which has the indexes or this is in 104 which also has indexes i mean they have an arabic version but now i'm going on tangents it's a great watch I don't think you'll be disappointed, and thank you for watching.